All right, so I think we waiting for a couple more people, but I think we're pretty much on time. So um, for today's webinar, I'd like, I'd like to chat to you guys a little bit about India. And it's, um, I see uh, Karina and Lindsay are both here. Hi, Karina. You guys joined me in India um, last year. It was, it, I can't remember what year it was. Um, this, this whole year feels like it's been going on for about three years. But it, it's a place that I visited for the first time last year and a place that I really, really sort of fell in love with. I think it's, I think there's a lot of negative, negative publicity around India, um, especially the parks, which I think is, is not justified at all. And I'm going to be sharing that um, with you guys in this webinar to show you some photos and videos of the experience. But I really do feel it's, it's a fantastic destination. I, I mean, I'm fascinated by it and I really can't wait to get back. Unfortunately, I couldn't go again this year. But um, as you'll see from some of the videos and some of the photos that I'm going to be sharing with you, it's an incredible place. And it's, uh, I think the, the forests and things that are there really need our support in protecting them. To, um, to protect the wildlife within and also to, to support, I think, um, local communities and things around India, around the, the national parks, because it is quite a densely populated country, as we, as we all know, and it needs that extra help. And we need to try and save these tigers and other amazing wildlife in these parks. So um, hopefully, you know, after watching, watching this webinar, it will give you a little bit more of an idea of what the experience in India is all about. And um, like always, feel free to, um, to ask any questions, to, to um, pop me a message in the chat box. I've got it open, so I'll be able to, to answer any of those questions for you. But um, yeah, let's get straight into it. I'm going to be sharing my screen with you guys. I just want to uh, make sure you can all see that. Bigger. Could you guys maybe just give me a thumbs up just to make sure that you can see everything there? Yep, all good. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, all right, let's get um, let's get straight into it. And first of all, I'd, I'd like to start off just to um, show you guys a little bit about you know where we go and sort of where we start off, just to give you an idea of the areas that we travel to in India. Now there are many parks, there are many places to go to, but I prefer to focus on central India, which is. There's three parks that I'm going to be talking about. But our first stop on this safari is in Delhi. Now, Delhi, obviously, big city and things. And, and the reason for that I've sort of chosen to, to stop in Delhi, to have everyone there the, the night before the safari actually starts. So I always like sort of getting everyone together the, the, the night before. So you can arrive anytime during the day. We can have dinner together. Also, just chat a little bit about the experience, what you might expect over the next coming days, and also just to get to know each other. Now, I think often if you, um, if you land, you go straight on safari, then things get a little bit hectic, and you don't really know um, the people that are on the safari with you. So I think this is a great icebreaker, and um, you, know, you can see where, um, for us, we can see where everyone is uh, from a photographic point of view. So first stop in Delhi, um, and we, we stay at the Radisson Blue Hotel. So it's nice and close to the airport. It's literally like a maybe a five-minute drive, if that. So nice, easy first day to, to get things going, like I mentioned. Have dinner together and just sort of get a nice sort of debrief on, um, or nice briefing on what, uh, what you might expect over the next coming days. And then from Delhi, it's a... Um, early morning start, we then catch a, a connecting flight into Nagpur, um, which is more sort of central India, and that's where, you, where we will then sort of transfer by road um, to our first destination. Now, 
for those of you that have been on safari with me before, you know I, I quite enjoy traveling by road to various destinations. I think it gives you fantastic insight of, of where you are in the greater scheme of things, but also gives you, I, I just love that feeling when you drive out of Nagpur, you know, you get into the, and even in Delhi, the, like big hustle and bustle, um, a lot of people, a lot of traffic, and then slowly but surely you start seeing that transition as you move out of the city and you get more towards um, the forest as such. So we then drive, it's about a three and a half hour drive, maybe four hour drive, depending on traffic, into Pench. Our Pench is our first stop, um, the first park that we, we go to. And um, Pench is quite an interesting one. I'm going to be chat. I'm going to like get to the lodge first before I get to um, get to the reserve. But uh, from the lodge point of view, we stay at uh, at Pench Tree Lodge. So you see, they've got these. They've got six rooms um, or six of these uh, tree houses, and then they've also got six um, ground sort of chalets, if you can call it that. Personally, I prefer um, for our clients. To stay in the in the treehouse, I think it's just a quite a unique experience. Um, there's not many places where you really sort of up in the canopies. You know, a lot of the a lot of the the, the lodges and, and rooms are on the ground. So I think Penge has got the perfect the perfect opportunity to um, to make use of the of the tree houses. As you can see, very very comfortable rooms. Um, each each guest gets their own room. So even if you book as a single person you're not going to share with someone that you don't know. Okay, so that is all um, included in the, in the rates. They, we've negotiated, the, the, the company that we work with, Pug Dundee, they, um, they've negotiated rates and things for us that we, we don't have a single supplement that we, that we charge you. So each guest, you'll get your own room. So in, in the past, um, last year, um, Karina and Lindsay, you guys will know, we had uh, the safari was open for four guests and then one guide, which is myself, this year and then also next year and probably, um, well, not probably, 2022 definitely and possibly going into the future. We're going to open it up to six guests, but then there'll be two guides. There'll be two wilder guides that will um, accompany you on the safari. And the reason I do that is it's not really necessarily for the game drives as such. But it just helps, you know, when we get back from the safaris that we can then sort of split uh, the, everyone up and then do Lightroom sessions in between <coughs> the, the game drives. But I'm going to be getting to the game drives a little bit later. Okay, as you can see, yeah, beautiful, beautiful deck, beautiful veranda. Um, love, the, love the lodges. Now, before I get to that video, all the, all the lodges in, in these areas, I mean, it, it takes a bit of getting used to because from a guiding background in South Africa, all of the um, the lodges in the private game reserves are in the are in the in the park, right? So you're in the private game reserve or in the park. Whereas in India, they're actually just on the outskirts of the park. Often, and they they call it in these uh, these buffer zones or conservation zones. So you don't live in the park itself. Actually, you're just outside of the park, and um, to be honest with you, in the beginning, I was a bit hesitant. On that, um, because the, the thought of, of driving through the traffic and things or, or villages as such, you know, I wanted to sort of wake up and get straight into it, but it really, really does grow on you. Um, I'm gonna be share, sharing a video with you now from Pench, and just to give you an idea of um, the kind of the, the look and feel about it. You'll be driving through, you've got like farmers with their, their cattle, you've got uh, people collecting water. And, you know, once again, I, I think it's part of, the, part of the experience. It is, it is um, heartwarming to, to see how the people live in those areas. I mean, you see even like little kids collecting water, um, children playing on the streets, playing cricket, which is obviously a big thing in, in, uh, in India. And it, it really, really does grow in you. So in the mornings and in the afternoons, you'll drive in um, through these little villages and things. And the, the time of the year that I, I choose to go is in, is in April. So it's a very, very hot time of the year. So we'll try and go out 
early in the mornings, first thing, as soon as the gates open, I think at six o'clock, you'll be at the gate, you enter, and then obviously late afternoon, you'll cruise through again. Here's, a, here's another example. You know, so this is a, a lady in one of the villages burning her fields. And it also, you know, it, it gives you like different, um, different photographic opportunities as well. I remember this um, was actually incredible photographic opportunities as it was getting dark, big flames. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I actually, like I said, it, it did sort of end up growing on me to, you know, to get a better idea of, of how the people live in these communities, how they survive, and, uh, and what they do on a daily basis. You know, whereas usually if you just go into the park itself, you don't really get a true sense of that. The only, I can, and the other place I can think of is if you do a road transfer into South Africa to some of the parks, and <clears throat> you, you get a slight sort of feel of, of what the villages are like. But this really sort of uh, grew on me, and I really ended up enjoying this after a while. So the vehicles. Again, another thing, you know, coming from a South African background, uh, before I went to India, I mean, we obviously did a lot of research and um, you chat to the people that have been there before and to the ground operators. The vehicles, uh, like you see these um, Suzuki, or they call them gypsies, a lot smaller than the vehicle, typical vehicles that you get in on, on African safaris where you have the big land cruisers or land rovers. But once again, you know, for... For these safaris, we only have two guests per uh, per row. I mean, per per vehicle. So you put one guest per row, which so there's there's more than enough space there for you um, to have your cameras and things like that. Um, even for for next year with six guests, we're gonna have three vehicles. We we used to have two, so we're gonna have three vehicles, six guests, and then the wildlife guide rotates uh, between the vehicles. You'll see also that we've got two. Um, local guides with us. So the one, the guy on the right, um, he's employed by the by the lodge. So he operates from the lodge. So in this particular case, from from Pench, and then you also have a forest guide with you as well. Now again, the the forest guide they there to make sure that you know people don't push the boundaries with animals, and um, and they also really know the 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 movements and the and the areas that these tigers move to really, really well. So a lot of these guys are definitely worth having them on board. And um, yeah, again, you know, part of part of incredible experience and, and just interesting to feed off some of the information that those guys have to offer. Now, a lot of the parks in, um, in India, they work on zones. So you get assigned a particular zone. So for your, for your morning drive, you will have a zone that you can drive in. And then in the afternoon, another zone. Pench is a little bit different in that there are no zones, so you can pretty much drive wherever, but you can only enter the park at a certain time. And unless you've got a full day permit, you've got to be out of the park at a certain time. Now, I haven't been there in winter, but I think if you, if you go sort of during the colder months, then you can do like a full day on safari. But a lot of these, um, these days in the summer in April gets really, really hot. So by like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you're going to want to be back uh, back at camp. It really gets super, super hot. Okay. Now, Pench is a, is a great starting location. The um, I must admit, the like my first impressions of it, it was a lot drier than what I expected. So it's predominantly like a dry, uh, deciduous forest, mainly made up, um, out of teak. But it's a fantastic um, destination for a lot of the general games. So, uh, like, and that's also again, you know, one of the reasons why I enjoy starting off there. So, it, there are, well, there are good tiger sightings there. We weren't that lucky last year, um, but you know that happens with with any park. You, you can you can either strike it very lucky, or you know you can have a bit of difficulty finding finding what you're looking for. But I think definitely from a, a general game point of view. Pinch is fantastic. You know, spotted deer is a, um, a variety of, of monkeys and things. There's Indian gore. So um, definitely a destination where you want to try and bank a lot of these um, sort of general game, if you can call it that, in Pinch. Um, yeah, really, really cool place for that. There's Indian gore, very similar to Buffalo. 
you get in Africa big mean looking animals okay now this part of deer and I mean these guys they play a crucial role actually to in finding these tigers and often alarm calling and um, they will then give away the presence of tigers um, Bench also, you know, in, um, in relation with, uh, or if you compare it to a lot of the other reserves in India, still relatively new, you know, so I'm not sure, not quite sure what, um, you know, what the steps are for the future, but you can definitely see the, the difference in road networking compared to, you know, some of the other more established places like uh, Bandhavgar and Ramtambur, where I feel there's a better road networking. And, in Pinch, it's quite big blocks, you know, so if a tiger moves through a particular area, it takes quite a long time if it does come out on the other side. So we, we, did, have, um, we did have a couple of tiger sightings here, but it was quite far away. Okay, like I mentioned, um, a, lot of, a lot of different primates, langurs, and there's also the, um, the Indian macaques, which uh, I really, really enjoyed. Probably one of my favorite animals during the whole of the of the India trip. Okay, so we'll st um, start off, we used to do uh, um, four nights in Pench. I've changed now to three nights. So only three nights at Pench to, to start off. And again, you know, that you'll understand, you know, as I sort of go on a little bit further with the, with the webinar, why I sort of decided to change around a bit. But I think like I mentioned, I think Pench is a fantastic starting point. It's not too far from Nagpur, and it's a good place to get that, uh, that general game sightings and, and photographs. But from Pench, again, a road transfer, we head into, into Kana. Now, Kana was definitely more kind of what I expected in India. So, totally, totally different to what Pench is like. So, like bigger forest, uh, big soul trees, um, I'm we're sharing a video with you now just to give you a better idea of, of what it's like. So a lot of soil, there's some, some areas with, uh, with bamboo. Um, and I mean, like the, the forest just completely took my breath away. It's, and I, I think that's why it, it's, it's so unlike Africa that, yeah, it, it, it just, you have to get excited when you see it. Because I mean, we don't, we don't get anything like that on our African safaris, unless obviously you're going towards, you know, gorillas or something like that. And then the, the camp that we choose also is still part of uh, Pak and um, Kana Earth Lodge. And to be honest with you, I think this is probably my favorite lodge out of, um, out of the lot. I just, I love the, the look and feel of it. It's spacious. It's um, like all these lodges are eco-friendly lodges. And I mean, the, the food is absolutely amazing. I think that that's probably another thing that puts people off India. Maybe the original thought is, you, th I mean, you, you hear about all these all these negative stories from a, from a food point of view I promise you the food is unlike anything I've ever had in my life it, it is it is right up there if not better than like a lot of the African safari camps it's filled with flavor and it's it's not it's not too spicy now that, that was my that was my original worry that you know like the curries might be a little bit too hot I just wanted more and I think that's one of the one of the things I'm really, really excited about getting back to India is getting back to that uh, amazing food, amazing curry and the flavors that they have. But again, you can see the rooms are really pretty and spacious. They've all got air conditioning, which obviously you need um, during this hot time of the year. But once again, you know, also in that buffer zone. So you, you are safe to walk around at night. I mean, they, they do get some wildlife that come through sometimes, but um, yeah. It's, it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful lodge. That's a, a look at the main area. So we can often, you know, if, you, if you're interested in having light room sessions, you can, uh, there, there's plenty of room there to, to sit there and work through images between drives. Um, and yeah, just a, just a really enjoyable place to, uh, to be around. That's another look at the, at the rooms again. You can see very, um, Eco-friendly, very comfortable, and uh, basic but very comfortable. If, uh, if that makes sense. Also, um, again, you know, incredible game viewing in Kana, and uh, probably a little bit, a um, little bit different. First of all, from a um, from from a landscape point of view, but I also found that 
um, a lot greener and also have more water sources around there, which, um, you know, during this time of the year, in April when it's really, really hot, you want to be able to have access to quite a few water points. Now, if you just drive in an area where there's no water, your chances of finding a lot of the general game and then in return tigers becomes a lot less. This was very special. So um, the Indian uh, wild dogs or dole as they're called, um, <clears throat> didn't expect to, to, to see this. Uh, then is the, the name of that lodge is Kana Earth Lodge. Kana Earth Lodge. So it's also still part of uh, Pak Dandi. They, uh, they are ground handlers for the trip. So that is Kana Earth Lodge, a really beautiful camp. Okay, so Indian dole or Indian wild dog. I was so excited to, to see this man, really special. We, uh, we didn't see them for too long. They sort of hung around a little bit and then disappeared, but really, really special sighting to see. And, you know, once again, it just, if you've been on a few African safaris, you know, it, it's, it's a whole new world to just to, to spend time with these animals that you don't really know much about. You know, you can do as much research and watch as many documentaries as you like, but, you know, to see it in real life, is truly special. So this is um, this is quite an interesting one. Um, going into the market, so like during the safari, we don't we don't focus on any cultural activities, um, and I won't say like no real particular reason, but I just sort of find I think you know from a like a logistics point of view, um, it's a, it's a bit sort of too much traveling around. And also found like for me personally, I wanted to focus on the on the forests. So if you want to do like a cultural experience, like I mean, if you can do um, uh, Varanasi or um, the Taj Mahal, that we can then do as a bolt-on for you. So either before the safari or afterwards, we can add those cultural experiences for you. But a lot of these, uh, most of these parks on Wednesday afternoons, they. Um, they don't, um, they're, they're not open. So then you can go into the villages and I'm just gonna share um, with you guys just what it looks like and the experience. I absolutely love this. They've got like little markets. Um, I mean, the, the spices and the herbs is, it really is phenomenal. A lot of people from the villages, they come there, they buy their, buy their supplies. Um, and like I mentioned, like I, next year when I go, um, I'm taking a bag with for a lot of the spices and things because you don't get anything like that where, where we are. It is, it is phenomenal. It, it is amazing to see how the guys operate in that environment and really, really friendly people as well. I, I really found you know, that people want you to come and, come and have a look and, and, and feel part of it. So that's what we'll do on a, on a Wednesday afternoon. I mean, you don't have to uh, have to do this, but I, I would highly recommend you know, just getting into those those villages and uh, or to, to the to the market and really experiencing, um, you know, just a more slight sort of part of the cultural side of it. Okay, and then so Kana now has got again a different to to pinch. Like I mentioned, you've got different zones. So we, when we book the, um, the safari, when we um, hold our spaces with Pug Dundee, we try and get access to some of the best um, zones as we possibly can. And we, we try and have all three of our vehicles in the same zone, just to uh, you know, avoid one vehicle seeing a tiger and one not. So we won't necessarily drive right behind each other, we'll split up, but we'll try and work that same zone together. Okay, so, and as you can see, I think this was, this is probably our first real good tiger sighting that we had. And from a photographic point of view, I'll be honest with you, it is quite tricky. It can be quite dark in those forests. So if you're thinking of going, I think it's something to keep in mind from, a, from an equipment and a lens point of view. And um, what focal range would you recommend? I, I would say on, on this particular trip, I think I had a, I had a fixed 400 with me. When I go again, I'm, I'm very tempted to, and I mean, I would definitely recommend traveling with, um, with two bodies and two lenses, but I'm, I'm very tempted to go the, the five or 600 mil route. 
um, with that. And in those vehicles, as you can see, they're, they're quite small. You can take a, a, a monopod with you because I found, you know, resting with a beanbag can be uncomfortable at times. And also, you know, trying to handhold a big lens like that, it does get quite heavy. So I would recommend taking a monopod with you. And, and then like uh, that 500 to 600 mil range, especially for, for pinch and pro probably Kana to an extent, but then also have a second body with something like a 70, 70 to 200 or 100 to 400. I think that's sort of focal range because we did get a few, or I think two sightings with animals, the tigers especially got quite close to the vehicle. So you don't want to be limited to, to just one, uh, one fixed focal range, if that makes sense. Hope that uh, that answers the question. Um, but beautiful, the contrast. And guys, I mean, I, I remember this so clearly. I mean, this gave me the the feeling that people get when they come to Africa and they see their first lion or their first leopard or cheetah, whatever it may be. I was totally overjoyed by this. And I mean, I, I remember that that feeling of seeing these beautiful cats. They are absolutely stunning i can't get enough of them i really really can't but uh, this like i mentioned the the big uh, salt trees just have a look how beautiful this environment is um, excuse the bit of shakiness i think it might have been excitement or it might have been old gopro before the new image stabilizers came in just look how beautiful that is And I remember the, like the the sounds that you get like first thing in the morning the birds, um, it is beautiful. Man. It really, really is. Okay, so that that gives you just a, a sort of um, a better idea of um, of what Kana is all about. And um, yeah, like I mentioned, a fantastic destination. So th last year we spent four nights there. Uh, this year and also going forward, we'll, we're going to keep it to four nights because I truly feel that it, it gives you um, enough time to visit different zones. But it's also, I think there, there's something to it. There's something that almost, like you kind of want more from it, if that makes sense. There's a lot of, a lot of potential there. And, and I really sort of I can't wait to explore it a little bit more. And then from Kana, we get to, to Banhavgar. Now, Banavgar is, man, it's, it's an incredible place. And um, Lindsay and, and Karina, you guys will remember, I think by, by the time we got to Banavgar, we had quite a, I think we, we had a couple of tiger sightings. Nothing sort of mind-blowing. We had a, a couple of decent sightings. And the, a part of me was starting to, to stress out a little bit. I, know, I knew Banavgar was going to deliver. But I didn't realize exactly how amazing it's going to be. And funny enough, on the drive from Kana to, to Banafgar, I think it's about five or six hours drive, we all had our camera bags in the back of the boot um, of the vehicle, you know, because you, you're driving on the main road. So you have like your phone with you to, to film around or GoPro. And before we got into Banafgar, into the actual park, next to the road, curious behold, there's a tiger. And I think I was in the car with Lindsay actually, and we were leaning behind seats and some camera gear was in the other car and we were stressing out because, I mean, this was incredible tiger sighting that we couldn't photograph. I was, I, all I had was videos from my phone. But luckily, the next few days, I, I can't remember, I think we had 12 or 14 tigers in the, in the four nights that we were there. So, I mean, by now I've got, it is, it, it, it's, probably one of the highest densities of tigers in the world. I think probably that and maybe Rantambor, I think the, the possibility of seeing tigers is so much more. And that's why I think it's a, the, probably the best place to, to end off. And for that reason, for um, it was going to be for this year and then for next year and 2022, we're going to change Panaka from four nights to five nights to, to end off. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, our camp that we choose for um, for Banafka, this is um, King's Lodge, also still part of Pak Dandi. A little bit bigger, and um, the the lodge it's it's 
almost more hotel-like in a way, if that makes sense, which I kind of preferred uh, Pench and Connor. They were a little bit more intimate, but the, the lodge is, is, is beautiful. There's um, fantastic facilities um, and, yeah, I mean, beautiful pool and things there. Also, all the rooms still air-conditioned. And, um, yeah, quite a, like, in a nice location. You're not too far from the gate. So Banavgar also works similar to uh, to Kana and other parks. We have different zones. So we'll try again in the mornings, try and leave early in the morning, get to the gate nice and early, so you can maximize your time out in the field there. So Banavgar is definitely, I think it's probably, excuse me, my tongue twister, probably because it's a little bit more established park. You can definitely see that in the road networking, where you have roads that are a lot closer to the water holes, um, you have a lot more water holes than a lot of the other parks. So, and combine that with that high density of tigers, it's a winning recipe. And this place definitely did not, uh, did not disappoint. So that's your typical view of the, the dining room. What we do, obviously, with, uh, with our groups um, is we'll, we'll split the table. So we would have our group together. Maybe occasionally we might be joined by other people, but we'll try and sort of have dinners by ourselves. Um, and if there's other nice people, then we'll, we'll join up and, and socialize with people from, from all over. So, again, incredible food. And like I mentioned, the accommodation is also fantastic. So, also, Banafka is also sort of a combination of, of um, I won't say like Pension Connor, but it's Connor, but also like a little bit more open plains. So, you have beautiful forests, you've got mountains, but then you've also got these, these beautiful open plains. So, this will give you an idea. Um, of what the surroundings look like. All right, so that's just one of the roads and um, one of the one of the afternoons. Actually, um, really, really pretty and um, yeah, special, special place. Again, you know, this is uh, you can see the bamboos in the back. I think this was our first um, tiger sighting that we had in Banafgar. And like I mentioned, it, it's, it's not easy shooting. You know, it's often like quite sort of thick vegetation. This was early in the morning, first thing in the morning. So what you want to try and do is um, head towards the, the water holes late morning. That's where the, these guys will, um, will go to. They often go and lie in there to cool down. I'm sure you guys would have seen some of the photos of tigers lying in the water. And that's why we decided to go in April and why we hosted Safari then, because eventually our luck did pay off. I mean, look at that for an animal. It is, it, it does take, absolutely take your breath away when you, when you see one for the first time. And I think maybe if, um, if I have one regret is I didn't take enough videos when I was there, because I, you know, your first, the first time, your first impressions of these animals, you often so focus on just getting still images and um, and trying not to to mess any photos up, but definitely would like to to get more video content of these guys because they are so so beautiful. Oh Tim, thank you so much. That's really kind of you. Um, so you know, in this particular case, this tiger crossed the road, and I, I'm going to get to I'm going to get to the vehicles and and like the the amount of people and things in, in, in just a second. But in, you know, in this particular case, that's why I say that having that extra camera body comes in very handy because the animals do sometimes come close to the vehicles. You know, often they cross the road um, and if you, if you just had a, a fixed focal lens and you, 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 might be, you, you might fall a little bit short with these close-up sightings. Now, let's, let's chat a little bit about the, um, about the vehicles and things because that's, that's a lot of people's concern when they, when they hear India and they, they hear these parks and you see all these um, horror uh, photos on, on social media about a thousand vehicles and people standing up and things like that. It is busy. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sort of lie about that for one second. You know, the, the, the parks are busy, but I found a lot of the times, you know, if, if um, the, the, the vehicles park in a line, the only time when I think it's really a hindrance, maybe, is if the tiger sort of tries to cross the road. 
then you can have quite a few um, vehicles behind your images. But for the like vast majority of the time, you know, and I'll show you guys some of the photos at the at the water holes. The vehicles can't sort of park behind the water, so they all have to stand in one line, and, and you're all sort of shooting towards um, the water. So it's it's something that you know it is what it is. You you can't change it. But I think for for me, what the positive I took of it was the the, the, the large majority of the people that we saw in these parks were, were people from India. You know, and I think that is, that is a really, really good sign. If, if you think about you know, how many people live in India the, and the, the size of India, it is actually a bit of a miracle that you, know, you still have these conservation parks, these parks where tigers are protected. And if we don't get the local people's buy-in from that, and the local communities buying from that, then you know there is no future for these parks. So, would it be nice to have it a little bit more private? One hundred percent. But with that comes higher prices, um, and also probably you know then a lot of the Indian people wouldn't be able to visit these parks, and then you know the interest becomes less and less and less, and you know then there's there's no reason to to save the tigers anymore. So. That's that's the side that um, that I saw it from. I would I would really encourage you guys. I mean, if 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 you're worried about the amount of people, they, that that's why we go with you know to to try and ensure that we try and manage it, manage it as best as we possibly can and get in the best possible position as we can. And also that's why we visit these different parks. You know, just to to maximize your chances and to really you know give you. Give you maximum opportunity to see these amazing creatures in the wild because i i really feel that you know they they need a lot of protection and hopefully um i'm sure um gurav that's on you he's he's from india and we, we're chatting about other safaris in the future but that that's that is my one um, my one worry about um, about a lot of these parks is you know how long can we protect these animals? We we even have the same problems in South Africa, you know? and I think part of the problems um, in South Africa is with a lot of these private lodges is it does become too expensive. Now even now, with our provincial boundaries being open, they they offering specials, but specials that no South African can afford. You know? and with that comes comes a massive issue. So I'm I'm quite. Um, I might contradict myself here. I'm quite happy with the fact that you know th these parks are are open for local people in India to go and visit because you, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to protect it. All right, so that's one of the water points like I mentioned um, in uh, in Banafgar. It's in the, this particular morning we actually had three tigers together, and I mean this this was exactly what we were what we were hoping for and. Yeah, I mean, just over overjoyed seeing seeing these guys interact. It is quite a bit of a distance away, you know, th this um, this particular water hole that we went to. But you know, I think that this was taken with a, um, a 400 mm lens. So I mean, you you can crop it in a bit and still get a um, decent enough image on there. there there's the three of them <coughs> together, and I mean, th this is this is exactly why you. While you go during the hot times of the year, and it's the, the the great thing about this is you know they they're probably not as active you know late morning as they would be during the the winter months, but you kind of know that they have to come to the water at some stage. So if you find a tiger or if you hear a lion calls close to a water point, it just takes that extra bit of patience, sit, wait it out, and they come down. And I promise you, it is uh, it is breathtaking. I mean it's they are incredible animals. Again, Banafka, I mean, like I mentioned, the floodgates well and truly open when we were here. And that's why I think five nights here, yeah, you well and truly get your dose of, of tiger sightings. This was actually, I think it was two, two or three, if I'm not mistaken, um, siblings that were drinking also at a water point close by. And you can also see that, that beautiful contrast, you know, the greens, against that orange coat of theirs. From a photographic point of view, I think Banavgar is probably, probably, I would say the easiest out of the, the three parks 
from a photographic point of view. Okay, again, you know, it's, it, it, there's, there's actually so much you can do, you know, with these, these tigers in the water, the, the reflection in the water. Um, yeah, it is, it is really spectacular. Another thing I, I didn't uh, mention is the bird life in India. I mean, you've got quite a few. This is an Indian roller. Um, I remember peacocks, you know, the, the, like, I think it was a pinch. The first peacock we saw, we all freaked out with excitement. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you become blasé because they're just sort of around every corner. Beautiful birds and the sounds. I wish I had a recording of, um, of the forest in the, in the morning. It is it really is special. It's a, it's a, yeah, incredible place and something that you have to experience. These guys for me, probably my favorites. The Indian macaques. It's um, it's family. I don't know if you guys have seen those. That uh, look. I think it's what's the snow or ice monkeys. So same, the same family, and real characters and you know incredible animals to to photograph. You could you could literally spend almost an entire morning or afternoon photographing these guys. I think they, they're really photogenic. They, they interact quite a bit. And um, yeah, it's just, a, just a, again, another different species that you can, can photograph and, uh, and interact with. Guys, that's, um, that's it from the, the presentation point of view. I mean, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to give me a shout. But yeah, I mean, India is, uh, is definitely a place that you should go visit. The, all of the, I can, I can promise you this, like a lot of the, the negative publicity that it's, it's been given, whether you're worried about the crowds or the food, it, all of that becomes irrelevant when you, when you experience the, the forest, when you see the tigers, all of that, um, I think it, it, it weighs sort of, it outweighs the, the negative publicity completely. Well, that's, that's, um, from my side anyway it, it, uh, it totally blew me away and i can't wait to get back there it's probably the trip that i'm most sad of that i couldn't do this yet um, i was really really bummed i was actually in the serengeti when i heard that india is no longer happening it's um yeah very very sad karina how wonderful to relive that great trip thank you thanks karina yeah it was a it was a fantastic trip and uh, glad that you and um and Lindsay could join me, along with Caroline. Um, yeah, incredible memories. I really loved um, looking, looking through those photos the other day and just reliving those moments. Uh, I just want to see, there's a question here from Ashul. So I want to dedicate my whole life, my time to this animal world, but I don't have information because in our society, there's no value for these things. The only thing which I need is your support and guidance. Um, and sure, um, feel free to send me an email. Uh, I'm going to leave my email at the bottom here for you. Then, uh, then I can assist you with that. So my email is down there in the, in the chat box. You can um, yeah, hit me up with the email and we can chat a little bit further. Tim asked, did you see any leopards on your trip? Tim, we actually did. Uh, we saw in Pinch, I think it was, we had a couple of leopard sightings. They were fairly brief. Um, I must admit they were on the move and then one was quite far away, but the possibility is definitely there. Um, I, would, I would recommend, you know, if you, if you want to sort of do the Indian trip and maybe do a bolt on, you can look at a place like Jawai, but it is, you know, um, Jawai, the, the, the one downside is uh, the, the, the price of it. And also, it's it's often often quite long distance visuals as well. You know, again, I think uh, that's where something like a six hundred mm lens would come in really, really handy. Lindsay, it was an amazing trip, definitely a must see. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, incredible, incredible times with you guys. It's uh, great to relive all those all those moments. Gurov says. Jalana near Rantambo for leopards. Okay, thanks, Gurub. Uh, Jalana, J H A L A N A. I'll have a look at that. I haven't, um, haven't actually heard of that. I must, must have a look. 
group and I are actually talking about uh, a few safaris as well. We're doing red pandas in November next year. So um, yeah, that, that's exciting. And we're also looking at some, some uh, like a lion trip in India in the future as well. What do you call an add-on? Dennis asks. Um, Dennis, so um, the, the add-on is um, like, or we call it a bolt-on. So if you feel that this incredible India safari, so Pench, Kana, Banavka, if you want to extend it a bit more and you want to do maybe leopards in there or you want to do some more cultural stuff, we can then add that on for you. You can either do it then with, with one of us and we'll travel with you or we can do it as in like we call general travel. So we book everything for you and then you just go on. There will still be a grant operator and people that will look after you, but you can extend that trip then and instead of doing it a, as a, what's this trip? Five night, instead of a 12 night trip, you can then do it like a 16 or 20 night trip if you really wanted to. So um, just because of this, uh, the safari is like 12 days doesn't mean there's no other options that you can explore. You can definitely, we've done quite a few um, where we've added on uh, cultural experiences for, for some of the other trips. So it's definitely an option. Although like we mentioned some of the other parks. I mean, there's so many parks that you can go to. Um, there's Kazuranga if you want to go and see Rhino. Um, Ranthambore is another place, uh, very good tiger side things. So a lot of different options that you can explore in India. Um, so Tim asks, I assume the vehicles you use to transfer to the different venues are not the same as the Suzuki is used in the parks. Tim, no. So we, we kind of use like little um, SUVs, like uh, mini buses, very comfortable, um, air conditioned inside. Um, yeah, so no, not the, not the Suzuki, it's not in that heat. Um, having them on game drive is, it works perfect. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, the, the roads in a lot of the parks are quite narrow. So if you have these bigger vehicles, you know, you can't really maneuver around as much as you can in those Suzuki. So if you have a Tiger sort of walking, um, walking past you and you want to turn around, the Suzuki's come in really, really handy. Because if you had a big Land Rover or Land Cruiser, we do about a 40 point turn to be able to turn around there. So yeah, there, there's, there's comfortable, comfortable mini buses that we, that we use. And um, yeah, they we use them for all the, all the road transfers. And then after Banavgar, we drive to uh, Jabalpur. And then from Jabalpur, we fly into Delhi then for your, your evening flight back home. You are welcome once again, we can arrange for you to overnight at the hotel in New Delhi again, if you want prefer to fly out the next morning. But other than that, most of the international flights and that night you can, you'll be able to fly back home. Yeah. That's it from my side. I'll, I'll see if there's any more questions. How did you find traveling internally on the flights with the weight of your cameras? Natalie, um, <laughs> a, bit of, a little bit challenging, Natalie, to be honest with you. Um, no, we, uh, we, we do chat with the guys. We, you know, if, if the luggage is overweight, then we will pay it from, from our side as a company. But uh, I remember, I think it was at, at yeah, flying out of Delhi that they've got that little um, domestic airport flying into Nagpur. You have to take all your cameras out of the bag and then all go through security and you have to pack it back in again. But I didn't have any problems with, with weight going out. When we flew out of um, Jabalpur into Delhi, we were a little bit overweight, but uh, simple, it just paid for the extra weight. I think it was 10 or 15 kilograms. We were over as a group and then it was fine. So if, I mean, obviously don't go and pack like a, a 80 pound uh, camera bag because then it's gonna, <laughs> you might get a few issues there, but you know, if, it, if it's a little bit overweight, then we'll cover the cost on that. Give another few minutes if there's any more questions. Tim, the trip is not on your bucket list. I promise you it is, it is phenomenal. You won't be disappointed. Um, it's a unique country, special place, friendly people, amazing food. Um, yeah, it, um, I can't wait to get back there. I really, really can't. 
Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome to uh, to have a look at the, at the trip on the on the website. So it's wildeye.co.za or wildeye.com. Check it out on the website. And like I mentioned, there are a few changes. I think it's all for the better and just to try and uh, make this trip better as we as we go on. So. Um, exciting times for us and really looking forward to getting back there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all the comments and engagement. Really appreciate it. Um, if you guys are interested, I'll be chatting on Thursday at 4 o'clock Central African time. I'm going to be chatting about another amazing destination, which is Tualu. We, um, our team were, um, were there last week. So some really cool videos and things I'd like to share with you guys. It's going to be at 4 o'clock Central African time. If you can't make it, it will be recorded and it will be on YouTube. So you can catch it there. Thank you so much and uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Cheers.